Welcome everybody, you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. Today we're doing label and one-hot encoding with Python. I will show two examples of each encoding, describe briefly some little pitfalls you should pay attention to, and lastly I'll just show one quick example and I won't go into it for sparse matrices. You need to import a few things, pandas, random, scipy, sklearn, numpy, and collections. Here's what our data looks like. I made a nested list of people's moods. As you see, they're all different. What this will look like after we do one hot encoding is this. Now, you need to understand that you have problems that are introduced when you're using one hot encoding and you just need to be aware of that. For instance, you may have a relationship or some form of precedence like ranking of your numerical placeholders here. So depending on your analysis, you need to be aware of that because it may create some form of rank that's unnecessary. The one hot encoding that I'm showing here, you should think of uh, just creating dummy variables. All right. And that's what it'll be referenced as where you're just filling in a one or a zero if it's there or absent. We need to mention that you should notice this caution due to the fact that you could fall into what's known as a dummy variable trap. If you're predicting an outcome based on these values, you can get a suggested correlation between them. For instance, if you knew what this variable was, you could probably predict what the outcome is for the rest is basically what the point of that is. And if you're using a linear or logistic regression, that would be a problem. And if indeed there was correlation between these variables for some form of analysis you did, consider using what's called a V IF, variance inflation factor. Let's get into this. We need to code up our first little label. So what I need to do is iterate through some value that I'm going to look at, which will be the name of the people's moods. And from there, I'm going to create an index or a pseudo label encoding that you're going to see. There we are. So for instance, if we were doing label encoding, you might have something that just looks like this. Let's get into our first example of one hot encoding or a nested list. Let's do our first example of one hot encoding. Let's iterate through the list of moods and for each word that's within our list, we're going to basically create a new column in our data frame. And from there, we're going to map these values as true and false. And you'll see that in a second. And here we go. So now you have your new columns that are corresponding to the true false values of this. We're going to convert these true false values into our one hot encoding. So this change the true false into our binary. Each one I'm taking in this column, I'm changing these to ones and zeros, and I'm just basically putting them back together. Now that's take the specific locations for the columns that we want, which would be one to the end, since we don't need this to change the data type. And then you change it by saying it as that type, we're gonna change it to int. We need to remember what axis we're working with. And let's get the head of that. Now we have our first example of one hot encoding for our variables. We can do this in alternate way where I will call this, just call it one hot, but abbreviated. Now let's create a series, which would just be a column. And I'm going to create a separator with a string join. And I'm going to iterate through this for the moods of people. And then I will do a string get and call in dummies. And then you need to take it in from the separator and then we're going to concatenate this once again and we're going to take in our moods of people as well as our new one hot and we have to do just like the last time put our access and i'll just grab the head of this and there we are there's an alternate way of doing that let's get into doing our label encoding this is a little bit in involved so this iterate through the moods of our people and let's take the indexes of all rows and from first column to the end we're going to get the values which will just make this into an, a list and let's take those values and then zip them together into a list where we're taking in our iterator and then a range from one to nine now what's going on with this let's print this out so you can see so it's taking each one of our rows and then this right here is basically using each column so you have a way to keep track of what's going on so we could line all this up, all right? Then we need to take what we just used, but we're going to iterate through this and we're going to look and see if this equals false, then we're going to append it to our new list 
and then we're going to set it to zero. Otherwise, we're going to append to this list the actual value here. So let's see what this looks like. You say, wow, what's going on with all these zeros? So it looks like I forgot this, not paying attention. So let's go back. Let's create this label encoder where I'm going to create a data frame from what we just made, but I need to split on every eight entries. So I'm taking each eight entries and I'm splitting it because if you notice that was just a list. It was not a nested list. And what I need to do is iterate through this and we're going to get our eight values and then I'm going to call the columns of my data frame the moods and let's see what this looks like. And there we are. So now it looks like we have our label encoding working, which is perfect. But let's do a little bit of legwork and add this column in. So let's do our concatenate once, once again. And throw in our label encoder that we just made. And there we go. There's a new data frame. Sounds great. Let's look at one more example with sklearn, which is a little bit tedious and frustrating. So right out the gate, you're going to see that there's a problem. It's going to appear perfect, but you're going to see what's going on in a second. It's this column pre-processing, taking our label encoder. We need to call the label encoder that we just declared. We need to use fit and take in our moods so it knows what to work with for the data. Then we're going to call the moods for these people and we have to use an apply function so we could work along the rows. I'm creating a function that's going to take in the label encoder and then we're going to transform that data and then and then you'll notice something here okay so you say well this looks like it's great it looks like it's kind of sparse there's a few issues if you're padding your matrix you need to re-index all of these to be one higher so you can pad with zeros unless you pad with something else for your matrix fairly sure you need to preserve the order in which these came now there's something that's not mentioned and caught me off guard and i'm going to show you now so if you see this this is actually Putting, let's do this. Let's print this off so you can see. And let's print this too so we can do a comparison. Now, if you pay attention, it's saying that this one is number one, right? So we have one and then five and then zero. So we have zero is here, one is here. This is the fifth one. This is the second one. So the ordering is based on alphabetical order. So that's going to throw you off when you're comparing in the end to how you set up the other one. And I'm going to show that. So let's do this mapping. I'm going to declare just some random name. And let's take, taking our apply function. Let's just, let's just cut and paste this. Because that's what I'm using anyway. So let's cut and paste that. And then I'm just going to make some random name for this list that we're going to use. And so now I'm going to iterate through what we just created with the matrices. And I'm going to, I'm going to append this plus one. Why am I doing this plus one? Well, we need to fix the, let me show you. We need to fix the indexes so we're not dealing with any zeros anymore. And then, then I'm going to create some other random list where I'm going to iterate through what we just called. And I'm going to create a temporary variable so we can pad this array. And I'm going to pad it so everything is of the same length of eight. Then I'm going to append everything and let's look at what this evaluates to. Forgot we need to add this little function in so we could pad our array so everything could be of the same length of eight. Let's get into the tricky little bit. All right, so let me go back. If you notice, these aren't necessarily in the same order, and we need to take care of that while it is padded and it looks appropriate. Let's tidy this up, and we need to fix the column ordering as well. Okay, so let's create something called moods and to sort all of our list. So let's look at that so you get an idea of what's going on. So I sorted the list so we could use this appropriately. Let's create a variable real quick or a list. Let's iterate through the name of moods and now this pend the value but this also increment so we don't have that same issue of having a zero index again and then let's create a new list let's just call it reordered and that that's going to help us store our information so let's call label let's just call it label people and now i'm calling in the default dictionary from the collections that we did before and i want all my values to be list so let's iterate through what we just created above we need to also iterate through the names which would be k which is the same as this but without any index labels 
this is stored as a let me show you there we are so let's look at that so you get an idea so we're going to use this so let's iterate through this and do it we're going to do a comparison so basically for this comparison what do we have to do we need to take the index value which is basically our label number and we're going to see if indeed it's in and we're going to use the set the set of i so we don't have to run multiple iterations so what's wrong with this indentation so we don't have to do any more iterating creating further nesting and what we're going to do is take in we're going to do this with two we're going to do this two separate ways one you create basically like a tuple where i'm having key value pair or i could use my default dictionary i'm going to do it both ways so you can see what's going on okay so it's taking our label where the the key will be our names and our value will be the list the actual number for our label encoding I'm also going to do the reordered I'm going to create a basically a list of lists with the same thing so I'm going to take that in and the else statement the else statement that we're going to have will be pretty simple because we're going to let's take in our reordered and let's just append the the name in this case it'll be zero so we get that padding that we wanted and let's do the label encoder for the dictionary that we're going to have and this is going to be pretty much the same and it's just going to take zero as our appended value and then we can look at what this looks like so you get an idea so here's all of our values let's see how long it is so it has eight entries that's also look at this if we want so you get an idea and here you go we can see how long this is and this is 800 because if you remember we have eight columns and we have 100 rows that's why and it's in a list not a list of lists so you could do the splitting if you wanted to let's create a data frame and let's take in our label let's tidy this up and here we go now how many did we have we had 100 entries which is what we should expect if we did it correctly now if you notice here it's in order because i had to adjust and take into account that these are alphabetical Cool, which meant that the original data was not and everything needed to be put corresponding to this so it matches up if we want to look and evaluate the other label encoder we can do that so here's the first line let's let's do a quick comparison real quick so when I print this off it looks terrible so we could see that the only three we do not have is irascible loquacious and kind irascible loquacious and kind so they're all the same it's just these are in different order now, but all the values correspond, so we're good to go. Here's just a quick thing. I'm sorry the video was so long, but to do the sparse matrix C, you can call in SciPy. You can create what's called or use what's called a CSR matrix. So we're going to create a sparse matrix. And so we'll take this in and see what that looks like. And it, and it doesn't give you anything, but we can iterate through it. And what it's telling you is that the 0, 0 position, you have the value 1, at the 0, 1 position you have 4, at the 0, 3 position you have 3, etc. Alright, and that's just that real quick. I'm sorry I didn't get to go into this in detail, just for a matter of time. But I would like to say thank you for watching this video. I hope about utility to someone. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you subscribe, turn on that notification bell. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.